Here we go. Um, so I hope you can read the text. The first thing we do is call the Rails command to generate this skeleton of the application. So you saw it generated a bunch of things, um, a bunch of files, and then the next step, the very next step, is starting the Ruby server. So seeing that everything works. The only prerequisite to this is that you have uh, Ruby and Rails installed. Whoops, it worked. We are up and running. Um, we have the web server running, and it's saying it worked. Um, this is running on an internal web server for uh, Ruby called WebRig, but it runs on Apache and LightHTTP and lots of other web servers as well. So now I've started looking at some of the directory structure that Rails created for me and some of the files. As you see, these are mainly empty files, but they're there just so I don't have to create them. And now let's create the first thing. We're going to create a controller uh, that's going to run this block. So we have this script generate controller, which is uh, uh, like a macro for creating these things. So these are creating even more stop files. So now we have a block controller, uh, and we're going to see if that works. Whoops, we didn't have any actions in there, usually. Um, so we're going to create the index action. The index action is the first action you see the mapping going to. And we're just going to say, hello world. And we're going to reload, and hello world. That's how much work you have to do to get to hello world. That's not a lot. So this was just saying hello world from within the controller. Not very interesting. Normally we want the nice model view control split. So now we create a template. Look at all the things I'm not doing. Look at all the configuration I'm not writing. All these things are mapped together just automatically. Just by saying blog up here, mapped directly to the blogging controller. And just by having index mapped directly to the index template. Hello from the template. And now we even removed the action and saw that it could go all the way to the template without having an action. All right, next thing. Um, setting it up with a database. That's the only piece of configuration you really need to do because unfortunately Rails can't read your mind yet, so it doesn't know your password, thankfully. Um, so we create the first uh, database. We're going to call it block development. Um, and we're going to create the first table. So a block should have posts, right? So posts, in plural, we create the table just having an ID. By default, all of these um, model tables just have an ID. And we're just going to start out simple just, just with a title. So all of these posts are just going to have a title by now. Um, and I am going to create the model. I just created the, t uh, the table for it. So I don't have an object for it yet. But now I also created the post model. So you see over here, it's just an empty one again. But just having that already gives it a ton of capabilities because it descended from the active record thing. So now we're going to use something called scaffold. Scaffold is a quick way of putting your module, whoops, we, have, we need to restart the server when we change the database configuration. So let's just do that. Um, scaffolding is a way of easily putting a model object online in a way that you can edit it. Whoops, we didn't create this. This was created for us just by the scaffolding thing. Now we're gonna create a new post. Just, hello, Priscilla. Yay, post was successfully created. And you get this entire interface just by saying scaffold post. And it automatically knows the names of the columns and so on. So let's add another columns, uh, column, um, body. Whoops, reloading. Now we have a body, and it's already a text field because it was a text row in the database. Um, hello, indeed. And all of the other screens were updated as well. Look at, again, all the stuff I'm not doing. I'm not saying how these things map together. I'm not restarting the application. I'm not compiling anything. This all happens runtime. So let's add one more. So now, whoops, we have a date field too. But it, it's at the bottom which looks kind of ugly, so let's move it up. Whoops, and move it up. Um, yes, so, so that's just a quick way of getting started. But the danger of this is thinking, people are thinking this is Rails. Rails is this scaffolding thing, which is really a minor comma on page 245. I mean, it's uh, one page of code out of all the stuff that's in Rails. So it's, it's more flashy than 
really just, whoops, oh, I'm sorry, I can't even keep up. Um, validations, we just added validation to the model, and now the validation is automatically hooked up to, to the interface as well. So we just had a validation that said, all of these posts needs at least a title. Um, what's the next thing? Whoa, briefing room, excellent. Um, that scaffolding thing, that's, I mean, that's cool. You can do something in one line, but you can't really change the code. What if I want to do something slightly different? So now we're going to recreate this uh, post and block thing, but instead of just having the one line, we expand all the code. So now if we go back to the controller, you see it has a bunch of actions. All these actions was just generated by this single line. And it automatically knows that it needs to use the post model and, and so on and so forth. And now we have all the actions. We even have all the templates, which means we can change the templates now. So instead of having that boring table list, let's create a more, something that looks like a web block. Um, so we remove a lot of stuff that's already there, and we transform it into how we want it to look. And that's really what scaffolding is all about. Just getting started, so you have some default templates, you have the CRUD operations, and then you can change that, which is really the whole people learn by changing a little thing, reloading and seeing the change. Um, so we're just going to do a div with uh, an H2 that has the title in it. You see all these link to and so on? These are um, functions or methods we can call in the view. But, and the view is um, just mixing code and HTML which seems like an old-fashioned way of doing things, but as you see, there's not really any code here. There's not huge structures. You're just calling methods, and that's how working in the view works in Rails, that it's just about calling these methods and using Ruby to do it. Rails doesn't have a specific template language. It just uses Ruby everywhere, which really helps the learning curve as well, because you just have to learn one language. So. Now we're done. We changed the index view to look like a template. But look, all the other old actions, like the edit and the show, are still the same one. So we can just replace one single screen at a time. Um, yeah, and let's just add another one. Um, and, and that's really the, the interesting part of, of, of the scaffolding, that it just helps you get started, and it's just nice for demonstrations too, so I don't have to actually program all this stuff to show you something. Um, we're just gonna reverse the list, so now the newest item is at the top. Um, and that's again just using uh, the post thing, which is an array, and we just call reverse on it to uh, move it around. But just to show you that we don't actually have all this stuff in, um, in the view, we're just going to call another method. I don't know if you know, um, Textile, which is this markup language for text. So we're just going to call textilize on the post body. And look, I, sir, just bold italic. Um, and that's how most of the code in this view works. Um, but let's change the, the list view slightly. It's set up for pagination, so you can have 10 on each page. But we don't really need that stuff. Right now, we just need to, to find them all. Um, I'm not we Oh, yes. So now we have this block that represented a single post. Let's extract that. So we just have that in a single template we can use elsewhere. So now we're gonna use something called render partials. Partial was that little thing we extracted. And now instead of having the for loop done uh, manually, we just call this render partial collection thing. Whoop, it still worked. Um, the cool thing is we now extracted a common piece of template that we can use elsewhere on the show page. Instead of having that boring default show page, we just used exactly the same template. Render partial object post. It's gonna use the same template, and now when we go to Hello Brazil, or that's that, it uses the same template. So Rails does a whole lot of stuff to cut down on the amount of code and the amount of repetition you need in your view files. But web logs really should have comments too. So let's create uh, associations with comments. Uh, so we started by creating a new model file, and that's how it works. So you do a little, um, then you tweak that, then you add another file to it, and now we are creating the post has many comments. 
that sounds reasonable. Um, so let's create the comments table to it. And look again, I'm not doing any mapping here. I'm just writing code, and Rails is figuring out how it's supposed to be hooked up. So a comment should just have a body, but it probably should also have a foreign key. What, what are we going to call this foreign key? Post ID. When we follow that convention just by model name ID, it knows that this is the foreign key we want to use. So we're just going to create um, the first comment here, since we don't have an interface to add it on yet. Um, Yes, yes, agree with the loop. Um, and then we are going to figure out how we're going to display this. So let's display these comments on the show page. Um, so we're going to make a loop where we're going to go over these comments that the post have. Look, post comments. That was the thing I just set up. Post has many comments. Now I can call post.comments to get the collection that's automatically wired together through the foreign keys. Um, yeah, we should just have a separation so we know where the comment sucks. Look, and there's my comment. There's my comment I create. Yeah, it goes fast. Don't blink. Um, but let's also have a form so we can add these comments to it. So we'll just create a new form at the bottom. And again, I'm not writing the form by HTML hand. Um, I'm just using these um, template methods to it, like form tag and text area and so on. And these all work together, so it's really easy to take the data you get from a form like this and turn it into a new model object. Um, let's see if we get the form. Yes, now we have the form at the bottom. But the form is supposed to respond to something. So we're going to create a new action called comment, which adds the comment to the post. Um, so we grab the post model, find the one with the ID. Oh, we just need to specify the ID on the form. So a given comment is added to a given post. ID post, yes. So now we have the post we want to add a comment to. We access the comments array, and then we create a new comment, and this is all on one line. We're not referencing even the body because we get this params comments. It's just a hash uh, already prepared for creating a new comment. And we're going to set a flash. Flash is a way of communicating with the next action. We can just set a message so people can see what happened. And then we're going to redirect back to the show action and back to the um, post that we were adding a comment to. So let's just reload and see if we can add a new comment to it and if it works. It sure did. And it added the flash at the top and added your comment. Wait, so now we have a web log that also accept comments. That's kind of neat. Um, how much code did we create? Let's run the stats. Um, 58 lines of code. Whoa. Um, and let's look at the log. What is, what is all this magic doing? As you may have seen, we haven't written any SQL or anything like that. So you can see all the SQL being generated, like select all from post to get that one. And on the show page, we select all from post where it's the given post. Um, and the, the log is just an easy way of seeing what's going on, what are the SQL calls being made, and so on. But Rails is really a lot about testing, too. So you want to have unit tests, you want to have functional tests, you want to have all these things. And by default, Rails sets it all up for you. When you create new model objects, see, we also already have two tests, and they're passing. Um, Rails is creating all this for us when we create new models. So we go to the post test, replace this test with your real tests. So instead of asserting that the post is actually a post, let's try to create a real unit test. So let's create, uh, make a test that adds a new comment and checks if the post has, has a comment. That seems simple enough. So we add the comment, then we reload the model object just so we're not cheating and it's already there. Um, and then asserting that this post has a single comment. And then we're going to run the unit tests again to see if, if everything is still working. Um, and the cool thing about all this is that when all this is set up for you, it's really easier to do testing than it's not to do testing. Um, let's just spring the trap and see that it didn't work. Yes, two was expected, was one. All right, so it was not just passing. Um, Another cool thing is something we call the console. 
this domain model we are building, we can use that interactively without the interface. So first we find the first post there is, assign it to P, then let's change the title without going through the web interface. Hello Denmark instead of hello Brazil. Then we save it and let's go back to the, to the interface, uh, to the list, hello Denmark. So now we have another way of getting into our domain model. That's really powerful when you need to debug stuff, so you don't need to go into the database or something like that. But we can also do all the stuff that the controller was doing, so let's create a new comment in here. Greetings from the cold no north. Um, so it created that comment, and let's just create another one. And you see it, it returns the comment that was created, and, and we could look further that if, if we bothered. Uh, that's the comments array. And then if we go to hello Denmark, it has these new comments. Um, so this just to, to show how strong the idea of having a domain model, having these separate um, entities that we can interact with in, in different ways is really a powerful idea.